Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Jabet Lozapone, Director of Student Affairs and the moderator for today's conversation. Joining me in studio are several student parents and Dr. Jermaine Williams, President of Montgomery College. Before we dive in, I'd like to share some information about the landscape of student parents in college by reviewing some data and what we're doing here at MC. We'll start with some national data. We know that nearly a quarter of students in college are parenting. That's five million student parents nationally. This is a highly invisible population due to colleges not systematically identifying and collecting data on the student population. Student parents tend to have high dropout rates, and yet they are highly incentivized to pursue post-secondary education and have higher GPAs than non-parenting students. In recent years, MC has begun focusing on student parents because first and foremost, we know it's an equity issue. 70% of student parents in college are single moms, and more than half of student parents are black and Latino. Student parents also overlap with other vulnerable student populations such as first gen and students who are food and housing insecure, and also those with high financial need. We also understand the potential impact on the college's enrollment and retention. Thus, we understand how student parents stopping out of college can hinder the college's ability to meet workforce demands and improve economic prosperity and mobility for families in the county. Through the Ascend Parent Initiative, Montgomery College is working closely with organizations like Generation Hope and Ascend at the Aspen Institute. We've begun to identify our student parents at MC, some of which are at the table, and we're collecting data on these students so that we can learn more about how to best support and improve outcomes for our student parents. You can learn more about the work we're doing and how we're supporting student parents at MC by visiting us at montgomerycollege.edu forward slash student dash parents. Thank you, Dr. Williams, and to our student parents. Uh, and thank you in the audience for joining this roundtable conversation today. So before we dive in, let's begin with a brief introduction to our student parents at the table. Hello, my name is Naja Mills. I'm in my sophomore year here at Montgomery College. I am majoring in communication studies and I have three children, ages eight, seven, and one. And what I hope to do with my future is advocate for student parents in need of additional support to successfully graduate college. Having firsthand experience, I can relate to needing additional outside support to make this transition into school a little more seamless. And I'm hoping to apply my communication studies degree into a plethora of different fields. Um, while I am unsure of what specific field I want to pursue within communication studies, I'm hoping to use those skills regardless to apply them directly to my field. I want to ensure that there's equity for people of my, my kind who are in need of opportunity. Um, and I'm just hoping to, to kind of get started with some different nonprofit organization areas and I'm, I'm really looking forward to the future, so thank you. Hi, my name is Carolina Avila. I've been in school now for three years and I'm studying to be a diagnostic medical sonographer. I have one child, he is three years old, and during my duration of studying, I realized how challenging it is to be a single parent. I hope to mentor and inspire others through my challenges and to set an example for my son through my hard work and perseverance of college. Thank you for letting me share. Hello, my name is Zachary Minhan. I'm a sophomore at Montgomery College. My major is business administration. I have a three-year-old son, his name is Wyatt. And what I plan to do with my future is either do something in business administration or accounting. Hello all, my name is Sharika Chin. I am a recent graduate of Montgomery College. I received my Associates of Arts in Criminal Justice I am the proud mom to a beautiful five-year-old girl. I hope to move on to university and earn my bachelor's in criminal justice. Then I hope to become a state's prosecutor. I hope you enjoyed those introductions as much as we did here at the table. We're all big, bright smiles. Um, and last but certainly not least, we have Montgomery College President, Dr. Williams. So folks might not be aware, Dr. Williams, I don't know if, if our student parents know this, but you actually have a personal connection to student parents. Can you briefly share a little about that with us? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's a pleasure to be here with everyone. It's your bright, smiling faces. And um, so my, um, 
my connection, as you said, is 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 very personal in terms of um, students who are who are parenting. Um, not only through just being in higher education for more than 20 years as an administrator and a faculty member, and having several conversations with with students who are are parenting and asking, you know, what can I do to create an equitable learning and engaging experience. Uh, also. My sister um, was a, a student who was in community college and, and parenting simultaneously with several several children. One of my one of my sisters and I recall, you know, oftentimes whether it be you know driving from place to pay, place, helping her uh, while she was not only in community college but also working. Right, um, so you know, transportation or and or watching her children, my nieces and nephews, which I was happy to do. <laughs> but I through that experience um, and the others that I mentioned previously, I was able to see in you know multiple different ways, not only professionally um, but personally and and through uh, my family in terms of you know the the impact and the the need for us as you know college administration college faculty and as a community to listen to you know what are students who are parenting what 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 you all need you know yeah. what's going to create equitable approaches to access and completion what's going to help us transform your lives so Thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure as he was saying some of that stuff, you're like, yes, yes, I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> so for a few years, Montgomery College has been making moves to become a family-friendly institution. And we just heard from you about an experience in your own family and your sister. Can you talk a little bit about why it's important for you personally that the institution continue this work? Certainly. And I, I'll actually start where I, uh, it's a great segue, uh, transforming lives. Like that's that's why I'm here. I know that's why so many of us um, at Montgomery College are here. I know that's what so many in the community at Montgomery County want for um, the individuals who attend Montgomery College is to to transform lives. I mean that's our that's our mission. We um, help individuals you know change their lives. So that's why it's it's important. Um, it speaks to equity as well. Uh, we know that in order to help transform lives, we need to create equitable opportunities, right? And in order to do that, we need to hear from, from, from our students, you know, our students who are parents, our students who have experiences uh, that they're embracing that, that, I, that I don't currently have, although I am a parent of, um, since we all shared, of, of, of two boys, five and ten. Um, you know, parenting while in school um, is something that I have a great deal to, to learn about, and I've learned a lot about it through a personal experience, but you know, we are continually dedicating ourselves to, to, to learning more. And one of the things that I've um, identified is that you know, the experience is not the same. Uh, right? It's not a monolith, right? It, right, so, so being able to reach out, and the experience is not the same on, on every day. You know, I, I mean, it's, <laughs> I think we all know uh, what it's like to try and get out of the house with kids. Right. Like, and you try, and you're like, oh, you try. right? Like, okay, like, oh, this happened. Like, what are you going to do? It's like, okay, I could, I could leave on time or I could change the diaper. There's kind of like a no question, right? right. But then, like, right. that could be a... That could be a 15-minute situation, <laughs> and then you might miss a bus because of that 15 minutes, and then you're 30 minutes behind. And mm -hmm. so it's when we think about going back to the question of why it's important, it's we're we're here to transform lives, right? And in order to do that, we need to take that equitable approach. Um, the other another component of it is when we think about intergenerational, right? Oh. And we think about absolutely right, that word, and we yeah. we. <laughs> so we think about, you know, children seeing mm -hmm. their parents thriving, right, in a post-secondary education experience. And they're like, yeah, I got yes. yes. That's, mm -hmm. I, see, I see that. Mm -hmm. I can do that, right? Yeah. Um, I, I know the power of that. I'm a first-generation college student. I, I saw that through my brother. I didn't get a chance to see that through my parents. Mm -hmm. But I know, um, and so many of us know the power of, you know, kind of younger individuals, especially um, especially if they're your kids, you know, seeing what you're doing, 
seeing the recent graduate walk across stage, right? Yeah, yeah right? I mean, yeah. I could tell you get, it's, yeah. exactly. It's that right? representation, like it becomes a possibility when you see Absolutely. Somebody. So I could talk for, um, for, for hours about that one question, but I will stop there in terms of it's important because we're transforming lives. It's important because we're, we're dedicated to diversity, equity, and inclusion, radical inclusion. It's important because we're looking at generations. Right, those are three major reasons that why it's important and I could go on for oh my a gosh. long time. I think we all could. And it's yeah. a perfect segue to my next question, which is gonna be for the student parents, because even from my own experience as a teen mom, I knew early on that my way out of intergenerational poverty was going to be to go to school, to get my education, right? It wasn't just for me, but it was also for the quality of life of, of my daughter. And so I'll go to Sharika first. Yeah. Um, what prompted you to pursue a post-secondary education? So I'm glad um, you came to me first because Dr. Williams, everything that you said resonated with me. So for me, I it was various reasons. The main one was I have a child that is on the autism spectrum mm. and for me, over the years, she's now five years old, and for the first four years of her life, I would be working retail jobs and just working jobs that would not provide a, a substantial um, life for her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so for me, coming back and going back to school, I was in Montgomery College before, and I dropped out because I got pregnant with her. And coming back, I realized that this is her only way out. You know, she needs therapy, she needs all that. And I'm not gonna give her that life if I just work a minimum wage job. And also, um, Dr. Williams, like you said, for me, I am the first person in my family to go to college. My parents, they have an elementary school education. Mm -hmm. So for me, coming back was for my daughter, but it, it's also about breaking that intergenerational curse mm. to show my brothers and sister that, listen, we can do it. We're the new generation. Let's do it for our parents because they didn't have the choices that we have right now. So those are the reasons why I have to do this and why I have to keep going, not just with Montgomery College, but also until I get to where I need to be. Oh my so gosh, yeah. that intergenerational, like you said, you breaking those break curses, yeah, breaking, absolutely. you know. Um, Zachary, I'm sorry, let me go to you, Zachary. Um, is it like a similar story for you? What, what's been your big push to, to go to college? So I call it setting the standard, right? So when I was just turned 23 years old when my son was born, and you start worrying about things like life insurance, health insurance, mm -hmm. right? Rent already, right? And you oh, have yeah. all these, you start worrying <laughs> you about 529 you plans. Yeah, like it's overnight, like instantly, <laughs> you know? And, and all those things cost money. And, mm -hmm. and you cannot do that yeah. on a minimum wage salary. No. And going back to school gives you that, that, that new floor, right? So your floor before you have a degree is $15 an hour in Montgomery mm -hmm. County. And once you get that degree, it, it's a lot more than that, right? So it, giving it. giving my son every opportunity to succeed in life there is what it was about for me. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we know why it's important, right? We're hearing very similar stories across the table about the importance of getting a post-secondary education. But let's be real. The struggle is real. Like, it is hard. It's brutal, if I'm being candid, right? <laughs> and so I'm going to ask you, um, Naja, how hard has it been to balance work, caregiving responsibilities, and school? Can you share a little bit maybe about your most challenging experience at MC as, sure. a, as a parent? Yes, um, battling those three duties are um, tremendous tasks. Um, some that I've underestimated, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, not, just not knowing what to do at times. Um, especially as a person where my mind's always racing, mm. I'm just thinking of what's next. I'm not really thinking about what's already in front of me. And so um, being a parent and being a student and uh, working as well um, is proven to be um, tough. There's a lot of pressure to succeed in all those areas, but also to appease myself because I'm realizing now as I'm growing and maturing that I'm having goals too. Um, it's really important for me to satisfy my own thirst for success right now. Yeah. Um, and so I know that I'm succeeding in those areas though. I mean, um, getting recognition at work for the hard work, being a student who's recognized for achievements and with my kids telling me they love me every day, I, I know that I'm doing what I've got to do. But um, there have been times at MC where I felt um, a little underheard as a student parent. Okay. 
and um, I can speak to a specific time a few years back because I am a returning student. Um, there was a particular course that I actually loved so much because um, I saw a future in that field for myself at that time. And I had just um, dealt with a hospitalization from an incident that occurred. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was taking my children at the time, the two oldest, back and forth to daycare. Um, I'm talking, pushing them up at strollers and hills and early in the morning. Um, and all I wanted at that time for, was for that professor to just understand where I was coming from. Um, I, I often non-disclose myself as a, a parent at school mm -hmm. because I don't want anybody to think that I'm looking for leniency. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so at that time where I came out of my comfort zone to let that particular uh, professor know, like, I'm in a time of need and I want to pass this class, but I just need a little help from you. Um, and was turned down mm -hmm. and told essentially to figure it out or to drop the class. Mm -hmm. And so that was really tough to uh, get through after that. I actually did end up dropping out fully after that because mm -hmm. I, I felt like, okay, I, I just don't have that support right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was tough, but I'm, I'm back. I'm right. back with better support now. So. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Um, Sharika, can you talk a little bit about yeah. an experience you've had that's been challenging? So, Naja is similar. I like how um, you, um, Zach, and I, we're all returning students because, you know, circumstances happen. And like you said, I have a similar story. So, like I mentioned before, I have a daughter that is autistic. And one of the um, symptoms, we could say, of autism kids is they lack sleep. So I have a child that will literally be up all night and it's normal for her. And as a parent, I'm a single parent, I have to be up with her until she decides to sleep. So if she doesn't sleep, I can't sleep. So I have professors, um, so most times I work, I also have a, a full-time job while being a parent and coming to school. And I've had professors, uh, some, some mornings I can't wake up because my daughter goes to bed at 8.30 a.m. and my class starts at 9.30 a.m. I physically can't. So I have professors where I'll email, and like you said, I don't like disclosing that I have a special needs child because I don't want it to be, oh, you're doing me a favor or I, I'm gonna use this as leverage. So I have professors that I'll email and I'll be like, I literally can't come to class today because I'm exhausted. I'm not gonna lie and say I'm sick, I'm just exhausted. And I feel like as a college, this is something that we need to revise. We have this three absences, drop the class. We can't do that and we have this thing where a lot of the classes have particip participation points. So you can earn it if you're not there because you're not participating. But I feel like if you have a student that when they're there, they participate and they hand in all their assignments and all their coursework on time, I don't think it's fair for you to subtract participation class because that student missed one or two classes or they have to automatically drop after three classes. In this day and age with COVID and everything that's going on, we just need a little bit more time to breathe. And breathing means if we miss a few classes, once we're up to standard with the work, it's okay. Let us have that as parents, as students. And not only parents, students also have, regular students have other things going on with themselves too. So understanding that we can't always be at every class, but once we're getting the work done, that should you know, be what matters. Yeah. That's a perfect segue because I was going to ask as you guys were disclosing. And first of all, thank you for sharing these really personal struggles and stories. Um, I'm glad that we're hearing about it because I'm sure that other student parents or even like you said, mm -hmm. students have dynamic lives. Faculty and staff have dynamic lives, right? We're all balancing multiple responsibilities. And so I, I appreciate you sort of venturing into offering some potential solutions and really it seems like flexibility is kind of at the root of it, understanding, empathy, compassion, um, especially I think if you're like an engaged, like if you're doing everything, yes. you're communicative, you're meeting yes. all the deadlines, you're, you know what I mean, it's kind of like, a little flexibility doesn't seem like a lot to ask, mm. but you know, there's also the faculty perspective and equity in the classroom, and it's a very complex issue. Um, to your point, because you already offered us a few solutions, but I mean, what do you think, maybe I already touched on some of it, but is there anything you want to add in terms of what could have made that situation better? Yes, um, so I believe, like at that standpoint, right, it was mm. a few years ago, and I wasn't in a place to um, really break down what had just occurred, all I knew is, this is another person turning me down. I've got to get out of here. Um, right. And so 
a solution, something that I'm thinking about is it all starts with your mental. Um, I feel like some kind of awareness and uh, training to better be able to empathize and humanize with us mm -hmm. is definitely needed mm -hmm. because like um, action is great. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the product and the result of the hard work mm -hmm. and our voices being heard, but you can't really transform anything until you understand and really be able to internalize what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so empathy is a big word that I, mm -hmm. I stand by. Um, we've Makes got me. to be able to understand where everybody's coming from. Excellent. Thank I agree. You. Agreed. Thank you. Yeah. So, Dr. Williams, um, when you reflect on your sister's experience and even your own experience indirectly, because it's impacting everyone in the family, right? And you're listening to our student parents' challenges. What comes to mind in terms of what might be the ideal qualities of an institutional culture that supports student parents, especially when they have to overcome so many challenges to get an education? That is, um, and thank you all so much for, for, for sharing your stories. And it makes me, you know, think about, you know, how, um, makes me think about how we in interrogate our policies mm -hmm. and our procedures, yeah. right? And yeah. in pursuit of our, you know, our, our equity agenda, right? Um, and it makes it think about, you know, what's ideal is, you know, the path that we're, we're headed, right? We have the, the Ascend program. We have, yeah. you know, conversations like this in terms of, you know, we should know, right, and I think we're on that path and we have done a lot of great work is, you know, what are the needs? Mm -hmm. right? I've heard a lot of you talk about, you know, just, you know, being like the, this determination and the tenacity and the persistence. And I know that, you know, I and, you know, so many at the college, like the, the culture, is that we wouldn't want students to kind of hunt, you know, and peck for resources that they need. Yeah. Right, we want to create, and we have done a great job of that in certain circles. And you know, so the the work is moving um, to create those equitable experiences. And I mean, you look at you know again what's happening with the with the Ascend program, conversations yeah. like this. I mean, you look at um, kind of virtual learning. Right, there mm -hmm. are fantastic um, examples at the college where we've identified what students' needs are, yeah. and then we've focused on being student ready. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what I hear kind of the beauty of this conversation is you are providing us with information so we can continue on our journey of, of being student ready. Because it's just, I mean, on any given day, and you shared the story, it made me, um, and both reflect is, so I was teaching at a community college years ago and uh, eight o'clock course. So 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Yeah, early. 8 a.m. Early. 8 a.m. Course, right? I had to shift my nobody's my work, awake. I had to shift my work schedule so that I could actually do it because I couldn't do it during work time. So 8 a.m. and you know the first um, week, there's a student comes in late and I was like, you know, I was like, okay, well, all right. So I talk with the student. I said, um, I was like, oh, I, you know, you're you're late. It's like the the first week, or you know, you're gonna. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is a class that you can attend? Or and she says, you know what? She says that. Dr. Williams says, I, I work second shift and someone picks up my kids and brings them home. I go from my second shift job to my third shift job, mm -hmm. right? After my third shift job, I can go home with enough time to wake my kids up and get them off to school. Then I come here, I take several classes, mm. and then I go to my second shift job. I see my kids once a day to get them up and get them out to school. And to that individual, I said, you're going to do fine in this class. It's like you made, like at that point, you like, recognize yeah. you showing up is the accomplishment. You're, right. you're here, you're committed. So back to the students. Yes. And I think I'll start with you, Carolina, because um, we haven't talked to you yet. Um, when you think about your experience at MC and building on everything like we've just heard and we're talking about and hearing Dr. Williams share even his own personal experiences in the classroom and you know what some of your peers just shared, what types of resources and supports do you feel like would improve your experience or the experience of a student parent here at MC? So definitely the scholarships from yeah. Montgomery College has been a huge asset to my success. Mm. Yes. The scholarships have actually allowed me to have finances and stability with a babysitter. Yes. So in that Excellent. case, I'm able to use that time to study. Right. Yes. And I feel that if students are supported, then they will be successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, one thing that I do want to inform that is the biggest challenge as single parents is that we have to choose between work and studying. Yeah. So we may have to pick up a shift and mm -hmm. then we end up behind in school because we're not obtaining to par to other students mm -hmm. because we have to be able to pay these bills, make sure that we are able to attend to our child's needs. Mm -hmm. Now with the scholarships, it actually allows me to be financially stable and to actually put my 100% efficiency into school right. to get the grades that I need to be successful in life and to be able to feel supported. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I do want to bring up is our tutors. Mm -hmm. I feel that it's extremely difficult as a working parent to find tutoring. Mm -hmm. And with these scholarships, I'm able to find online tutors at my time and I'm able to log into the computer and this is the way I was successful to pass my classes. I know that MC and Montgomery College, we have tutors, yeah. let's say at the Science Center, the Mathematics Center, but these hours are limited. Mm -hmm. So when there are resources online and there's, you know, advantages of scholarships, you have to, you know, it's like a building block of Tetris. You yeah. gotta find your way to be successful. And if you can find that and continue to pursue and not give up, you'll go very far. Oh, I love that. Thank you for saying that, Carolina. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting, um, you know, and I think about also how the pandemic has shifted some of mm -hmm. what we're doing at the college, mm -hmm. and some people see it like as a disruptor. I see it as an accelerator, although it has maybe felt disruptive at times, <laughs> right? But disruptive at the end of the day, right, exactly, disruptive acceleration. I like that. I'm, I'm going to start using that. And so, you know, it's this thing where I feel like Montgomery College, I think, was already doing a fantastic job. Like, we were already on, on trend to do certain things, but across the board in higher education, it tends to be very slow going, right? So the fact that some of these things with, like, virtual and remote, um, services and courses, I mean, that I think has really been a huge help in particular to student parents. Um, so I will turn it over to you, Naja. Do you have any additional insights in terms of what might be helpful in terms of resources and supports? Um, sure. So outside of that uh, training, right, to be able to empathize with our demographic, um, I think. I'm not going to say a smaller ratio of uh, like students to professors because we're adults and um, these, these spaces are big. They're big enough to handle that one to 20 something. Mm -hmm. But I think um, kind of thinking back into elementary, middle and high school, taking a little bit of their concepts. So um, recognizing that there are student parents at the college, not just student parents, but parents, um, sorry, not parents, but students who um, are not thriving academically, who need better support outside of what Carolina stated, which is uh, tutoring. I think that finding ways to accommodate their needs in the, the product would be that smaller ratio. Um, one professor to maybe half of a typical class um, to be able to offer better time um, to these students. I, I just know um, from personal experience, first of all, I love school. Um, so I, I like to ask questions and I'm okay with getting help. Um, but I know that some of my classmates who may have language barriers or different other struggles or first time college students or first time students at MC specifically, um, they're not speaking up about the help they need. Mm -hmm. And I think um, kind of pushing those uh, courses to smaller sizes could really benefit them. So in this case, I'm speaking for those who won't speak for themselves but I think that's something to consider. As soon as you said that, I immediately started thinking about why programs like the Achieving the Promise Academies Embedded Coaches are so important because you're not minimizing the number of students in a course, but you're adding another individual who can support you in that classroom. And so again, I feel like the college is doing like these little things um, that maybe they can be scaled up. Um, and then I just want to go back to what you said about the financial scholarships and assistance. It's not just the tuition that you need to be able to come 
to class, right, in order to afford the tuition, but it's also to subsidize potentially or have emergency assistance for when these other financial obligations are resting on you mm -hmm. so that you have the time and space to be able to focus on your studies. Um, Sharika, is there anything that you want to add in terms of uh, resources and supports that you feel like could improve sure. the student parent experience? And then this is also oh, Dr. <laughs> Williams. Definitely. So for me, mental health is very important. It is absolutely important to be your best and to show your best, you have to be in the right state of mind. Mm -hmm. And going back, I won't go through all that I went through last year personally, but I feel like something that we could sit down as a college, as a board, all of us could sit down and figure out a way in which we could get um, on campus therapists, mm -hmm. not just academically, but a lot of us do not have insurance because of various reasons. So to get therapy, um, we can't afford it because to pay for individual session is like $100 or more mm -hmm. to pay for that. But I feel like in order for students to succeed and stay, we all have silent battles that we go through mm -hmm. daily. And sometimes <clears throat> that's why it's silent. We silently do it and then it causes us to drop out whatever our circumstances are or it causes us not to be at our best. So I feel like if a college can some in some sort of way incorporate some therapy group session something to help students get through whatever it is that we're going through personally I think it would be a big help to all student body not just student parents but to the students on a whole especially with COVID a lot of us mental health took a dive yeah. and in this time and we're really trying to get back there but it's hard when you have nobody to talk to it's like we just keep drifting, drifting, drifting away. But if we have something um, at the college or someone that we could drop in, not just our counselor for our academics, someone we could go to and be like, you know, Dr. Jibet, you know, this is happening to me today. And you counsel us and be like, you know, it's gonna be good for the whole entire student bodies. And also for faculty too, you know, so it's just something that I would like to see Montgomery College do in the future. And we could talk about ways of getting that done. Ooh, I like right. how she's like she's making blues too. Like, let's talk about let's this. Talk let's talk about it. It's further. important. Mental health, honestly, guys, it is very important. And a lot of times, we we are depressed. You know, we have suicidal thoughts because we're silently battling whatever we're going through. And I think it's okay to say that I'm not okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay, and I'm saying that because I am a person that struggles with mental health. Yeah. So I can say on days I'm not okay. I'm not okay to get out of bed and I wish I had somebody to say that to. Um, but a lot of us do not have the insurance to cover outside help. So if the college can some way help students out and faculty, it would be great to yeah. say, I'm you not okay. You said two things. One, I think mental health is a, is a big issue. It is important. Um, but you also said something that I think is really key and important in driving the work of student parents forward, and that is whatever benefits student parents mm -hmm. is going to benefit the student all body. All parents, yeah. all students, excuse yeah. me, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. everybody wins in that situation. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna come to you, Dr. Williams. <laughs> I'm coming <laughs> to you. Based on what you've heard today, does anything resonate with you from, from the stories that our student parents have shared, are there elements of college life that you think can help student parents be even more successful? Yes, um, and yes, yes. There's a lot that <laughs> resonates with me and there are definitely elements that I think could help um, colleges, you know, parents or students who are parenting become more mm -hmm. successful. And I, I've heard that, mm -hmm. right? So that's, I, I mean, so I could, I, you know, I don't want to be repetitive, but I think one of the pieces is, you know, the conversation about how we get the resources to mm -hmm. the students, mm -hmm. right? Um, and finding out where our gaps in resources are, right? And, and I think about, you know, the, you know, scholarships, right? You know, it's like, how do we, how do we ensure that everyone knows about scholarships? And that's, I think we, we don't do that because we do, right? Mm -hmm. But I also hear that there's an opportunity for more, you know, communication about that, you know, more awareness, and then identifying, wow, do, do we have the capacity mm -hmm. to create the equitable support? But I think about in terms, because I know our, you know, our, our you know, our, our advisors who, you know, we have counseling and advising, mm -hmm. and they are, you know, for you know, mental health counseling, right? And, mm -hmm. and they, so, but what I'm also hearing, right, I have to balance that reality, and we at the college have to balance that reality that we know we have a, a group of professionals who are dedicated mm -hmm. to, you know, mental health and counseling, right, for our, our students, right? Yes. Um, at the same time, like period, point blank, and they do a great job. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you are here sharing mm -hmm. 
if the college only had more. Yeah. Right. Um, so what do we what do we what do we do with that? S similar, you're sharing what the college has tutoring, right? But you're taking kind of scholarship funds and purchasing tutoring that's you know additional, right? Complementary to the college. So you're right. you know so you're identifying like there are the resources, but you know this is what's going to make the experience equitable mm -hmm. for for me. So I think it's kind of going back to you know, listening to those voices, identifying what we have, identifying you know, how we're making those points of connectivity mm -hmm. to be supportive. Um, maybe we have opportunities where you know, it's, we have resources that are underutilized. I, do, I don't know the answer to that question. There could be mm -hmm. multiple responses to when we identify, maybe it's a group of individuals such as yourselves and or more saying, well, you know what, because maybe the story that I shared about the second shift, you know, yeah. coming home, getting your yeah. kids ready, uh, or excuse me, second shift, third shift, coming home, getting your kids ready, then going to school, um, how, do you get, how do you get information? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, I mean, if you're there, you know, so a group of, you know, students who are parenting, what, what's the best way to get you information? Which I know, I'm not, I hope that doesn't seem like an oversimplification, but if, if you don't have the information, you can't act on it, right? Exactly. And if, and then that will also mm -hmm. share with us where our, where our opportunities are, right? Our, yes. our opportunities and our challenges. So yes, mm -hmm. so much resonates. I would say, um, you know, but the most impactful thing is, is, is your voice. And us, you know, hearing your voice and making sure that you are in conversations where that voice is listened to, mm -hmm. it's heard, it's consumed, is acted upon. I think of our governance structure and our student constituent group, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and, and ensuring that, you know, in some way, shape, or form that the 22-ish percent of students who identify as students who are parenting at mm -hmm. our great institution are, you know, getting their voice to that body, right, that right. student constituent body and saying these are the concerns that we have as student constituents because that governance system is beautifully set up to create just dynamic mm -hmm change at our college. So those are a few of, of my yeah, thoughts. Yeah, yeah. And also now that we have a student parent alliance, which again some of you yes. are members of, mm -hmm. there there are lots of mechanisms. Mm -hmm. But the contextualization of the experiences, sometimes when we're talking about it sort of uh, without these real personal shared stories so that you can actually understand. I mean I think the story that you shared with the right. student is so like poignant. Like mm -hmm. we have students that are working these night shifts and then they're yes. going to this shift. They're coming straight here from work they literally saw their kids for you know 20 minutes and that's mm -hmm. it I think it really helps as even almost a case study to sort of better understand like okay what really is the reality right. that our students and, are experiencing say, how do we leverage that right so that to your both of you I believe shared this um, so you're not bearing your soul to every single person yes. you run yes. into. Right? Exactly. I'm, like, I'm like reflecting right. back. Like, both have like expressed hesitancy in terms of, well, I don't know how this is going to be perceived. I don't know yeah. these things mm -hmm. like so, you know, while we want to get the message across and we want to create, you know, student centered and enhance that mm -hmm. opportunity, you know, for equity, it's it's not at, you know, kind of the the cost of every student who's parenting having to go to share mm -hmm. with every single professor and every right. single counselor yeah. and every single, you know, like, yeah. you know, this <laughs> is, so we, you know, and we have mechanisms to do that. That's the good piece. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to throw that out there. Um, yeah, so. thank you. And so let me just maybe poke a little bit further and ask you in which ways you think maybe that Montgomery College can better partner and collaborate with local organizations to lift up student parents. Um, I know that you're even participating now as a new president with uh, the Aspen Institute, I believe, right? Yes, yes. So, so yes, yeah, so, I mean, Aspen and Aspen Institute is a very large, um, very large kind of um, organization entity, if you will, and they have several components. And you know, one of them, as we know, is the the, the Ascend, um, you know, component which focuses on you know, student parents, and you know, they really speak on on what we're doing here, which mm -hmm. is acknowledging em embracing and creating action um, based on the fact that you're the experts mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean that's a I mean so that's I mean this is a this is a, a great kind of continuation and it speaks to you know one of their many components of you know in order and I've you've heard me say this before um, in order to create change right um, that's actually going to then lead to you know transformation <coughs> Right. We need to be able to understand the lived experiences, mm -hmm. right? 
in a, in a way that doesn't exhaust each and every one of you. Right. <laughs> in, a way that, in a way that someone's not sharing their lived experience all the time. Right. Um, right. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, holding up and acknowledging the expertise that you have, right? Because we go, I mean, we go to school for a long time, and you know, we have all these things that we're supposed to do. And you think about it, though, you know, we're creating programs and initiatives and trying to, you know, elevate these transformational experiences for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these types of opportunities where you know we can identify, like, wow. So I'm already thinking, like. Okay, I want to go ask. You know, what what's our online tutoring look like? And you know, because I think about if you're spending money for online tutoring, which is something we provide, mm -hmm. then maybe there's an opportunity for us to redesign the way we provide tutoring. I don't know the answer to that question, <laughs> but these kind of you okay? Yeah, I'm good. But these, <laughs> are, <laughs> but these are. Yeah, right. No, don't don't I hold it in. Get excited yeah. about that. We're gonna redesign like, yeah. online tutoring. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but these conversations provide us opportunities to, you know, really dig in and whether it's poke or, or probe, um, you know, our current structures. And I'm a big fan of interrogating our current structure yes. um, so that we can be <laughs> student focused, so that we can be, you know, equity minded. And we are student focused and we are equity minded. But we also, period, full stop, we also know that we must continue to learn mm -hmm. and grow. And you know, students are not monolithic. Yeah. So how do we create that you know dynamic experience so that each student can thrive? And think about all the kind of the identity phases that you know this kind of phrase of identity uh, phases kind of go through, right? I mean, it's like you know you could be um, you know you could be a a, a child, right? You know, but think about what happened, all the identity phases before you leave the house and before you get to your class, whether oh, it's virtual, yeah. right? You could be someone's daughter or son. Yeah. You could be someone's brother or sister, someone's yeah. mom, right? Someone's aunt. You could be you're transitioning, and then you sit down and you're a student. Yes. yes. Right. And that, exactly. That, and it's just like that. It switches, yeah. right? Yeah. You need to be the student. So you know, there's all these things that we think of in terms of of support. And again, I just um, really am thankful for the opportunity. So what I see is getting our students who are our parents and you know continuing in places and spaces where their voices are heard mm -hmm. and making sure we're following up on on those voices yeah so. and just to add you know even it's it's like you know we can't surely we can't expect Montgomery College to be all things right and to mm -hmm. be doing everything in-house but I think being able to leverage the partnerships and the collaborations that we have within the community it will allow us to be able to meet the needs that our, our student parents and all students mm -hmm. have at Montgomery <coughs> College so I want to ask um, if you can share an experience, Zachary, yeah. um, that you've had at MC where you felt seen and received care and compassion as a student parent, because we know there are wonderful things that are happening at Montgomery College yeah. that we're really proud about. So I know the, a lot of the parent, every parent actually at this table, um, and we all share the same trait of success is, is we have to succeed. We, the failure is not an option for any of us at this table. Right. And we have to succeed and we have to succeed to the highest standard that we can to allow ourselves to, to have every opportunity that we can obtain. Mm -hmm. And last semester I had had a family situation come up and I'm a business major so my business courses are really important. And it was in my one of my business classes and at the end of the semester Right in finals week, I had a family situation come up and I needed some flexibility in when I could take my final. And my teacher was more than accommodating. She was like, listen, I don't, final grades aren't due until mm -hmm. this day. I'll open up the, the final exam. You can take it any time within that time. And it was, it was perfect for me because I, I literally, I took it, it was like the middle of the night one night. You know, it, when it was just the only time that I really had yeah, that yeah, I could yeah. do it. So it was, it was perfect for me because it gave me that level of flexibility to where I was still able mm -hmm. to get the grade that I deserved, but also do the work that I had been working towards this entire semester. So that was. I love that's like a recurring yeah. theme, that flexibility that yeah. we keep hearing about. Naja, <coughs> um, do you have an experience again, you know, care and compassion? Yes, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, actually, this past spring uh, semester, um, I took a course, something that was like uh, foreign to me. I've never heard about it outside of okay. MC before. And it didn't just, I didn't want it to just be an elective. I wanted to actually gain something from that class, mm -hmm. um, which is why I decided to go outside of my comfort zone and take the class. Um, and that professor, again, I didn't self disclose that, disclose that I was a parent until further towards the end of the course because it was accelerated. Mm -hmm. So it was very, um, very fast and very tedious. Um, however, um, I got to a point where I had to let her know 
because I was getting everything done on time, but mm -hmm. I told her, I know I can do just a little better. Um, I am a parent, a working parent, um, and I'm taking these classes, and I, I, want, I want you to know I'm enjoying this class. You've made it great, mm -hmm. but I want to do more because I don't want to just pass. I, I really want to pass with A's if I can. Mm -hmm. um, and so she, uh, we had an assignment, and um, she didn't know that I had intended to complete it regardless of my uh, like duties at home. And so she kind of gave me some ultimatums as to, um, you'll still get the credit here, but if you uh, take that extra step to do this other assignment, um, you know, kind of situation. Um, so again, unbeknownst to her, I was determined to get those assignments done anyway without that conversation being had. Mm -hmm. um, so for her to just think about me in that manner mm -hmm. um, was, was so big. Um, she later nominated me for an award, my first award at mm -hmm. MC, oh, actually wow. like ever in my adult life. <laughs> um, so like that was a big deal and um, she really opened the door to me hearing about other opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a really nice experience. That's Excellent. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Carolina, do you have a, maybe a story you could share with us? <coughs> yes, absolutely. So in the year of 2020, I actually signed up for a mathematic course. Mm -hmm. This mathematic course was very difficult because it was my very first semester at Montgomery College. Okay. Mm -hmm. As I just took the placement test and I passed with a high level of math, mm -hmm. being so that I was out of school for so long and then taking a very advanced and accelerated math course, had a very difficult time. Got it. So I took a look at the syllabus and I noticed that the professor in was in in the morning. So I had contacted him by email and I sent out the email and he made an arrangement of an appointment to just go over all of the assignments that I didn't completely understand. And from that moment on, I felt initiated that somebody actually cared for me to succeed. Mm -hmm. Being so that he answered all my questions and allowed me to further my education with tutoring online as well. Because I did mention to him, I am a new student. I am looking for a babysitter currently. I'm having very, very difficult time finding care for my child. Mm -hmm. And he did inform me of online tutoring. And from that moment on, once I had that meeting with the professor, I didn't want to give up. I wanted to yeah. keep going. <laughs> so I went ahead and booked an appointment online weekly mm -hmm. for online tutoring at Montgomery College, and I was assigned a one particular tutor. And I always met with her, and I was able to pass the class with an A. Wow, yes. yes. <laughs> you know, and I like what I'm hearing, especially with both of your stories, in addition to that theme of uh, flexibility. It's like, don't tell me you care. Don't just tell me you care. I mean, I, I want to know that you care about me, but show me you care. Yes. And I feel like those are really brilliant examples of where faculty were able to do that for you. So you are here. I know Sharika graduated this past spring, which was Dr. Williams' first commencement here at the college, which is really great. And some of you are going to be graduating next spring. And then I believe by 2025, your goal is to graduate as well. Um, I'm going to turn it over for this last question to Naja, who is our Generation Hope Student Parent Fellow. If you could tell us how you think MC is positioning you in your family's future. Yes, um, I'll happily do so. Um, so just being at this table, right, with President uh, Williams and Dr. Lozupone and other fellow parents. Um, that's a big uh, opportunity right here to hear what we need. Um, again, we're advocating for those who can't or won't speak up for themselves. Mm -hmm. And MC is doing the action. Like you're turning our words into the action. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Williams, you spoke earlier about transformation and it made me think a little more. MC is providing opportunities where my life is literally transforming, mm -hmm. um, opening the doors directly to um, job opportunities, mm -hmm. um, internship opportunities, mentorships, um, these micro-credential badges for these classes mm -hmm. that are boosting our resumes up in the field that we want to pursue, mm -hmm. um, certificate options, and the list goes on. It's something that I really didn't think about because as a returning student in a much better position, I'm able to receive the information now in a way that I couldn't before. Mm -hmm. um, and so MC is turning the tables, honestly. I don't know another school locally that is um, mm -hmm. doing what they're doing. I mean, you have a whole um, initiative here for student parents, like who's doing that? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm appreciative. Like the, the quality of my life is changing as we speak. 
Um, my income is increasing as we speak. Like you said, we have rent and bills and I don't wanna mm -hmm. just work for that. I have dreams of my own mm -hmm. and MC is literally um, allowing that opportunity. So thank you so much. Yeah. Oh and I goodness. just wanna add. Go girl, um, yes, tell us, tell us more. <laughs> tell us what we're doing well. <laughs> yes, it's true, it's true. And I wanna add um, something that you said. Um, I want to also thank the faculty, not just the professors, because I've had um, faculty help me to write my scholarship um, essay for, for, for moving on. And it's not someone from the Reading or Writing Center. This is just a regular faculty here. Mm -hmm. And um, I sent her my original draft and for her to read it, and she helped me rearrange that so good got a scholarship full ride umd <laughs> let's go so yeah, it's, yeah <laughs> so it's just um it's great that you that you mentioned that and not just the professors but also faculty outside you guys are wonderful doing a good job and we couldn't ask for anything else Excellent. You gave us a yeah. seat at the table. Exactly. What, what more can we ask for? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that I was a teen mom and that mm -hmm. my reason for going to college is very similar to yours. Um, of course, throughout the struggle um, and process of getting my education, I always wondered if the sacrifices that I was making, if it was really going to be worth it. And I know in talking with Zachary, he had shared sometimes he questions, you know, mm -hmm is he being a good dad when he's having to make such tough decisions? And so I don't want you to just take my word for it about how powerful this opportunity and experience is of getting your education and how it's absolutely gonna change your family's lives. Um, so I have a message from my daughter about her experiences as the child of a teen mom and student parent. So we're gonna hear from her. Nice. It's really crazy, you know, I think reflecting now that I'm 23, um, you know, I work full time, I go to school full time, and it's, I feel like a lot in the times now that I think about my mom, and I think about her being a teen mom, and I think about her going to school full time, working full time, but then, you know, having that additional job as a parent, because um, that is basically a full time job, and I feel like that's a job you have forever. Um, and I can't even imagine all the stuff that she was going through. And I remember there being times where she was getting her master's degree at Hood College and she didn't have any childcare. So I would always end up going to classes with her. Sometimes I would just go to the school, she would sit in front of TV, I'd have some french fries and you know, while she was in her class for maybe two hours, um, I would kind of just entertain myself and other times I would go into the actual class with her um, and thankfully she had professors that, you know, would allow that. Um, but there's not always professors like that. And I can't even imagine, you know, doing that, having to even do that and then go to school full time and, and work full time. And I think about, you know, my friend's little sister. Uh, she has two kids uh, under three years old. Um, I think she is 19 years old, I want to say. Um, and she did not finish high school. Um, and I think it's hard because you feel like you can't do it. You don't have time. You're exhausted. I even feel like that. <laughs> and I just don't even have a kid. Um, you know, I just go to school and I still feel exhausted. And there's times where I want to have a mental breakdown and I feel like I can't do it anymore. Um, but in those times, and I always bring it up to um, my friend's sister too, that, you know, my mom was there. My mom was in your shoes and she was able to do it, you know. And now recently she just graduated with her doctorate degree. And I can't even put into words the feeling of of knowing everything that someone has been through and then being able to see everything that they've accomplished as they're walking up that stage it's something that you know I don't know if she felt like this but I feel like wow like all of that hard work and everything that you've done you know you've paid off and now you're starting your own business and you're doing all of these great things um, and it's just really it's a great feeling so yeah, that's my baby, y'all. That's my baby. And she's also a student here at Montgomery College. And, you know, seeing that uh, video of my daughter and just sort of reflecting and remembering, again, that brutal struggle and, and you know, how difficult the path is. But it absolutely has been worth everything, everything that I had to put into it. And so um, I just want you to know that everything that you were doing, all the sacrifices that you were making, it absolutely will be worth it. Um, we're coming to a close, Dr. Williams. I know we got to get people out of here. Oh, was it that time? Right? I don't know, it's about that time. It's about that time. So, um, 
you know, I'm so appreciative to you. I'm mm -hmm. so appreciative to our student parents. Again, everybody at the table has come and been willing to be candid and share mm -hmm. personal stories. Um, is there one message that you would like to leave with our student parents before we depart today? One message. Uh, I'll try to be brief. It's about that time. <laughs> so I would say, uh, first, you are, you are awesome. First and foremost, you are awesome. Second, we are so very proud of you. Mm -hmm. um, so just extremely proud, I know, here at Montgomery College. And, and thirdly, I, I would say, you know, having talked with so many faculty and staff um, and seeing, you know, their dedication, and our dedication as a college to equitably supporting students, um, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to continue to um, create those opportunities. We're going to continue to learn and develop. We're going to continue to listen to the to the experts um, mm -hmm. so that so that we can we can advance. Right. And we can transform lives and every life is is different and I know in talking with so many at the college that that's mm -hmm. you know that's what we're dedicated to that mm -hmm. care that compassion that empathy that leads to that leads to action that transforms lives um, mm -hmm. and it's just exciting because you are all um, an inspiration and so I think I would probably just leave on that you are an ex inspiration we need your expertise to continue to, to move forward. And I know that you have so many individuals outside of Montgomery College who are also extremely proud of yes. each and every one of you <laughs> and see you as the inspirations that each and every one of you are. So, um, you know, I thank, we're thankful that you chose Montgomery College and um, we're excited to be part of your, you know, your, your present and your futures. So thank you all so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams, for that really lovely and I think inspiring mm -hmm. message. And thank you again to you for joining us today and, and sharing those personal stories. And to the audience, thank mm -hmm. you as well. Again, I'll mention our website where you can learn more about the work that we are doing here at Montgomery College. Uh, you can go to montgomerycollege.edu forward slash student Parents, if you take nothing else away today from this conversation, please know that the future is bright for our student parents at MC and their families. You are welcome here. Obviously, I hope our student parents at the table feel like they are welcome here and that they belong. If you are currently a student at Montgomery College and or a student parent, um, we wish you the best of luck with the summer session and the upcoming semester. And if you are not yet a student at Montgomery College, we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you so much.